All right. So we talked last week a little bit about scripture, kind of what it is as much as we can talk about what it is. This week, we're going to talk about scripture as a communal work, and we'll see how far we get in about 15 minutes time. But basically with scripture as a communal work. So we've got scripture as a whole. So, and we talked about this last week, that scripture as a whole, uh, what the canon of it was established by the Christian community. Uh, so that is the whole works of scripture um, being put together. That in itself is a communal work. But the parts of scripture too, we get the, the thoughts, uh, the speakings, the teachings of various communities throughout our, our history as, as not only Christians, but just people and followers of God as well. So I'm going to talk about some different aspects of that. So um, the first to talk about will be the communities in scripture. So I've got two examples. Uh, and if you're viewing this online, there'll be a link that'll give you the outline for uh, this class. And um, for those here, uh, you'll be able to uh, see that on the, the handout we've got. So there are a lot of different communities in scripture. Uh, Paul alone, you can talk about with communities because he is speaking to different communities that he's serving. But uh, I'm focusing in on John and Isaiah just because they give good examples of, of how the community part of scripture works, of, of how these different communities came together to form these various texts. So John is the gospel specifically written to what we call the Johannine community. So they would have been uh, a specific group of early Christians. They would have been followers of the beloved disciple that we hear of in John. We're not sure if that beloved disciple was actually John, but the tradition has that it was John. Um, and so the gospel, according to John, is written to that community, as well as the epistles to John. So first, second, and third John are also written to this community. I won't talk as much about the epistles. They're likely written by various authors throughout the ages, they're not written by the same person who wrote John. Um, but the, the, the gospel according to John, that wouldn't have been written by the beloved disciple himself. It would have been stories that the beloved disciple told to uh, the people in the Johannine community, the people who were following his particular telling and story and community within the broader body of Christ. And so these stories got passed down and eventually they got written down. And so a lot of those stories, just that the, these were the stories that were deemed important or most important for the people in the Johannine community to know. Many of them too were also seen as uh, good examples uh, to explain things that uh, the Johannine community was going through at the time. And of course that changes over time too, like what's useful for the community to know. So as we talked about a little bit last week, the very end of John, was added later. So this is a great example of the community adding on to the work um, that's going on. So later on, uh, the Johannine community thought, well, we need something explaining why the beloved disciple is no longer alive, um, based on all, the, all these other things that have been said that 
made people believe that he was going to live until Jesus came back. So that's why we get the story um, at the end. Um, and we get, and, and which is a wonderful thing because we get that beautiful uh, story there where Peter is brought back by Jesus, where Peter has his threefold confession of Jesus um, that parallels his threefold denial of Jesus um, earlier. Another great example, and we'll talk about this a little bit more with some of the Old Testament with the Tanakh, um, with John, is uh, there's, there's what's called the last discourse. And this is what Jesus says in John uh, during the Last Supper. So it's after he's washed the, the uh, disciples' feet. He has this like long speech. So if, if you take the time, because it's several chapters long, if you take the time to go through that, what you'll notice in the last discourse is that you get to this point about halfway where it sort of seems like it's repeating itself. It's a little bit different, but it repeats itself. And so because of that, because some of the inconsistencies um, with what Jesus says, I think he at one point says, uh, none of you have asked where I'm going, but then like several chapters before, one of the disciples did. So the thought is, is that there were two versions of the last discourse and they were both seen as important and they were both seen as holy. So the people that put John together, they just put them both in there. Um, so that's why, the last discourse seems to repeat itself, um, and it's and it's why it seems to not always be in sync with itself either. Um, so that's John as as a community in Scripture. Another community we get in Scripture is back in the Tanakh, and it's uh, specifically Isaiah. So if you've ever tried to read through Isaiah, if you're like me. You, get, you got really confused and you're like, what's going on? Because there, there's these shifts, there's these changes. That's because Isaiah isn't one work. Uh, at one point in time, we thought it was two. Uh, now most scholars agree that it's three. So what you've got in Isaiah is you've got first Isaiah. So the, the likely the original prophet Isaiah or at least somebody writing off of the original prophet Isaiah. And that gets you the first 39 chapters. And that's Israel before the exile. So the exile is when uh, for the northern kingdom, um, the kingdom of Israel, that's when uh, they got taken away by the Assyrians. For the southern kingdom, um, Judea, that's when they got taken away by the Babylonians. So Isaiah, first Isaiah is written pre-exile. So that's before the Israelites are still in Israel. It's before they're um, made to go away by these much larger and very powerful empires. Then you've got second Isaiah, which is chapter 40 to 55. And that's the period of exile. So that's when the Israelites are away from the land of the Holy One. They're away from their ancestral home. And then you get third Isaiah, which is 56 through 66, that's post-exile. So that's when the Israelites were later able to return back to um, Israel, which uh, would have started um, around the time of the Persian Empire, if memory serves. Um, so, and that's just, I, I, I give those examples to give you a sense of how scripture, how the different books in scripture were, were sometimes written, that there are communal works, that they're being added to over time, that sometimes they're the works of different people within the same school. So these different Isaiahs would have been prophets from the same school that, that started with Isaiah. So that gives you that sense. 
The next way we see scripture as a communal work is the differences between the various communities in scripture. And I'm just going to talk about that in the context of the Gospels. So there was one point in time, um, Tadian, uh, an early church father, uh, was one of the people who tried to combine the Gospels because people didn't like that there were all these different stories. And people didn't like that the, the stories of the gospel seemed to contradict each other at times. So they decided, we're going to take everything in the gospels, we're going to smush them all together and make one cohesive narrative. That did not last in Christianity um, because we saw all these stories as important. And so some of the differences we see, uh, Matthew and Luke give us a great one with the nativity. Their stories of the nativity are very different. They focus on different things. Um, for Matthew, we get the story of the uh, wise men coming. And interestingly, in Matthew, it, it's much more focused on Joseph. It's about the only time we really see Joseph in the Gospels is in Matthew. Uh, Luke, much more focused on Mary. It's where you get her pondering and treasuring these things in her heart. But the focus in the, uh, the nativity there is on the shepherds coming and seeing, um, seeing them, uh, coming and seeing Jesus and Mary and Joseph. The other thing too is um, the wise men come later, uh, the shepherds come that night, which may makes sense. It's, um, if you go to Israel, you'll often go to Shepherd's Field, which is not terribly far away from where the Church of Nativity is um, there. You know, another, another difference we get is when we get Peter's confession. So we would have had that earlier this, this year in this season after a Pentecost. Um, and that's where uh, Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. Like when Jesus asks, who do you say that I am? The interesting thing is in Matthew, it's the only place where Jesus um says that on this rock i will build my church with peter so that's that's a big difference that we get there and there, there's other little ones that we have um so that's just something to note that the, the gospels don't always completely agree with one another sometimes they add stuff in sometimes they tell things a little bit differently but as Christians, we've seen all of them as holy, um, despite the differences they have. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more uh, now with the differences within communities. And that's what we see in, um, in the Tanakh, in the, the Old Testament. Um, so Genesis is a great place where we see that, those differences in the communities. So the creation story, we get essentially two creation stories, one in chapter one, one in chapter two that, that goes into chapter three. So the first creation story is very global in its focus. The second story is more particular. That's where we get Adam and Eve. And the really interesting thing, which I talked about in the sermon last week, we don't get, one might think that we get the, the command to be fruitful and multiply with Adam and Eve specifically. We don't. Um, their call is uh, to cleave to one another is, is a more literal translation of what we get there. Where we get the, the call to be fruitful and multiply is in that first story. 
um, which is to all humanity. So that's why, so if you think about the marriage service um, in, in the prayer book, there's um, often a line um, in, in the margin there, which means that this is optional. At the very beginning in the prayer, uh, there's a thing in there, um, and if God so wills, children. So having children isn't seen as a necessary thing for marriage. Um, but it is seen as a necessary thing for us as humanity, which really means that we're all called to help raise up the, the generation that's after us. Um, so that's so sometimes it's helpful to see those differences because it helps us under thing, understand things theologically. Um, but it also, it, again, the, um, and this is like really where, where this class comes from. Um, one of my closest friends um, who's Jewish um, has gone on to me at least once, maybe a couple of times now, uh, just talking through scripture and saying, you Christians, you have such a tendency to see things so literally. Um, and it, it, I don't, I would refer to myself as a biblical literalist. Um, I, I do see it as God's word and holy. And um, as I gave an oath twice in church uh, for my ordinations, that containing all things necessary to salvation. Um, yet now the creation story is a story. It's, it's not, this is exactly how things happened. Um, so that's, that's where it helps us to not be biblical literalists. But I think my friend was right in a lot of ways. And I think this is something that we can learn from our Jewish brothers and sisters and that we can learn from how scripture as a whole is organized. Um, the ancient Hebrews saw all these different stories as holy. So they put them all together, even when they seem to contradict each other. So no, the story of Noah is a great example of that. Um, between six and seven, there's different numbers that are used there, um, which throws a lot of people off with scripture. And, and they're there for the same reason we have all these four different gospels that sometimes don't always look at everything exactly the same way. Because different people are focusing on different, different things when they're telling these holy stories. And so the, the ancient Israelites saw these, all these stories as holy, even if they didn't agree. So they included all of the stories that they could, which I think is a really beautiful thing. And the last thing um, that I want to throw out there with this is with scripture as a communal work. Is we also see debates in scripture between different communities. And a great example of this is Ruth versus Ezra and Nehemiah. So Ezra and Nehemiah are, are tell the history of coming back from exile. Ruth was written around the same time, but it's, it's, a much, it, it's covering something that's much earlier. So in Ezra and Nehemiah, there's this point where um, one of the uh, scrolls is found possibly from Deuteronomy. And uh, as they read it, they realize there's a command in there not to take foreign wives. And all these people have been in exile. So they all have foreign wives. And now they're like, oh no, we can't do that. We're not supposed to do that. So they get rid of their foreign wives. Um, which is problematic in a different way. So part of what Ruth is written for, um, so Ruth of course is a foreign wife um, way back when. And at the very end of Ruth, um, I mean, it's a beautiful story in and of itself, but at the very end of Ruth, we get the genealogy after her. And it leads up to David, the greatest of, the kings of Israel, um, and also 
the as as we know the the ancestor for Jesus. Um, so that's its importance to us. But the reason that the writer of Ruth is pointing this out is that it's to say, hey, like foreign wives aren't always bad. Like look at David. He he had uh, his ancestor way back when was a foreign wife. And of course, it's also forgetting there's all these laws too about how to join the people of God, that, that there's a process for that too. And also, you know, that we're called to look after one another, just setting aside, you know, a foreign wife like that is, is not a good thing. It, it, it hurts other people. And, and the reason for that initial law was so that things like with, David's son Solomon don't happen, that you marry all these foreign wives and then you bring all these other gods and then all of a sudden Israel isn't focused on God anymore. They're focused on these, these um, other false deities. So that, like I said, gets at, I think a great example of the debates that even scripture has within itself. And that's good and important and holy too because it helps us like I said, you can follow this thread and see what is it that God is actually saying to us through all these different writings. So, and again, just the takeaway from all of this, we have all these different communities that wrote all these different works within scripture. We see that through how they wrote scripture and, and some of the additions that were added to these books later. But we also, we also see in them this desire to look at all these different stories, even when they conflict with each other, as holy. But we also see that those who were establishing the canon of scripture saw the same thing. Um, it doesn't mean that things are wrong, because sometimes we tell a story differently for one audience versus another. Um, and these were a lot of, like, the Gospels are a great example. These, these were different audiences that were being written to. So and that's an important thing for us to remember, that scripture, as, as we get into this idea of community in these, in these coming weeks, that scripture itself shows the community at work. Um, and it shows the importance and holiness of all these different stories from all these different groups. And so I'm going to open this up um, at this time if there are any questions. Yeah. So back when you were saying that the Matthew story mm -hmm. differed in Matthew and Luke. Yeah. But they don't contradict. They them. don't. The That's true. When, when there are differences between Christmas and Christmas, it's usually what the focus was, not, right. Not that they were right, right. Yeah, I mean, sometimes the numbers are different in certain things, like, like again with Noah, and that I mean that throws people off. But again, these are two different. They're the same story, but they're two different traditions of the story, and they were both seen as holy. So, so there was a little bit more openness to that um, by the Hebrew people. I think it's something that we could have too. Um, there's certainly different feedings that we have. Um, and these feedings, um, the, the, these feedings are, um, um, these, these feedings may be different feedings in themselves too. So we don't know about that. But yeah, as far as the, um, but looking specifically at the um, the story of the nativities, yes, like the nativities were two different stories, at two different points in Jesus's um, uh, Jesus's uh, birth. Um, but yeah, they're not in one they're, they're each in different gospels because there were one there's different stories that were being told to different communities but two 
there's a different focus that each of them wanted to have as well. Um, so yeah, so that's that's to answer that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's there. There's there's nuance to how we we understand. Um, in the Episcopal Church, as well as in other denominations, what scripture is the word of God means. Um, because it's, because the word of God is essentially being distilled through the writers. Um, so we've, we're, we're getting what other people were listening to with the word of God. And they had a different understanding of things. Uh, like in um, Joshua, uh, there's, um, this might have even been in Torah too, um, where the Israelites are, are coming away from Egypt, coming back to the, 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 the promised land. Uh, and there, there's these points where, uh, staff is raised or something and, and there, or as long as somebody's arms are up the sun stays in, in the sky um, and the way it's described it makes it sound like the sun is going around the earth we know that's different now so so people are listening to god but also listening through their particular understanding of things i think the thing that's helpful to return to um is um the understanding of sacredness of story, even if everything in the story didn't literally happen. Um, Jonah is a great example. Uh, we don't know if Jonah happened um, or not. Um, there's reasons both to think that it did and it didn't. Um, because one of the history works does refer to it in scripture. Um, but there are a lot of scholars that think that that, that didn't happen. Um, that doesn't mean we can't learn from the story of Jonah. In fact, there's a lot that we can learn about forgiveness um, and the toxicity of not forgiving um, from Jonah. So, so that's an important thing that we can learn there. Um, Yeah, yeah, and and again, I mean, we know, we know with the creation story that it didn't literally happen, but I think there are a lot of truths that we can learn from the creation story itself, too. Um, and yeah, our, our forebears were a little more open to that. Um, so we say it's the word of God. It doesn't mean that it has to be. You know, all like, 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 this is an exact notation of everything that happened in history. What we're saying is that we learn about what God has intended for us, what God wants for us through scripture. Um, and sometimes we have to take a lot of work to listen, to, to suss that out. Um, it's kind of like uh, panning for gold. Um, or something, you know, you, you got to sift through it a lot before you actually find it. Okay, let's see uh, who made the determinations. What stories would be considered holy? Yes, yeah, so that's a good question um, from Zoom. Um, so, and that's, that's, we talked about that a little bit uh, last week, but basically the, the early councils of the church established which uh, which books were going to be in scripture and which weren't. Um, so that's kind of the simple answer to that. But I, I, I would say with that, so, so the, the writers for scripture are listening to God um, and writing down what they're hearing from God. Um, then the, 
those who are, are saying, yes, this is part of the canon of scripture are also listening to God and, and, and listening to where they hear God speaking uh, in those works too. Um, were stories included in order to get certain points across? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and yes, yeah, there, there's, there's a thought that, that, yeah, so the order of stories in the gospels even. Um, I mean, John's another great example of this um, may not have happened exactly when they occur how they're they're given to us and yeah that's that's thought too it was to get a certain point across um, you know and, and a great example is again with john how it ends we're, we're made to think with doubting thomas that that's the end of it and and in fact, we hear of Jesus spending that, that time on earth, but then we get this extra story after that. So that's another great example of, um, yeah, there, there's, there's probably a lot more stories of what happened with Jesus and the disciples after he was resurrected. I, I think we, we have this tendency to think that he was there with them and then he was ascended into heaven. And uh, the reality is he, he's, Probably with the disciples for quite some time afterwards, um, before um, ascending uh, to heaven, um, and we just you know we just don't know all the stories. Um, the, we we have the stories we have, and we have those stories because it was deemed that they were important to write down. And also, too, you know, that was the point where people were saying like, "Oh, there's a lot of this stuff, and we need to teach this to people." And probably should, you know, write it down so that there's a record of it, too. So any other questions? Okay. All right. Well, thank you all. Um, and like I said, next week, we're going to start looking specifically at how community works in Scripture. So we're going to learn more from Scripture, this communal work, about community. Um, oh, and one more thing before that. Yeah, so certain stories uh, seem a little far-fetched, uh, like Noah. Um, yeah, uh, I, yeah, I mean, I think that's fair to say. Some of that may be, you know, our understanding is different. Um, you know, miracles happen all the time, and I think there are things that we don't always understand well. Uh, I remember um, as part of my hospital chaplaincy training, going in to this, this woman in the emergency room who um, was screaming, like she was screaming out. I, I got the call to go in there because I was, I was actually waiting uh, to go in to see somebody else. And I, you know, I could hear the screams right by and one of the doctors or, or one of the health staff came out and said, hey, are you a chaplain? Could you go check on this person? And I go in and the woman, uh, and, and, you know, and I say, I, I do my spill, like, hi, I'm Trey Kennedy, I'm, I'm a chaplain for the spiritual care department. I don't even get to finish that. Like the woman just says, prayer. And so boyfriend or husband, whoever was with her gets out of the way. I get over there, say a prayer, and like she calms down. And you know, I asked if there's anything I could do after anything else I could do after that. Husband, boyfriend says, "I think you just did." <laughs> I can't explain that. Um, you know, why why that happens from from a like the, you know, there, it, I can't explain how like those words in and of themselves were able to help this woman. I, I could explain it by saying God intervened in some way that I don't fully understand. Um, so I think that's like with a lot of miracles and stuff, what we see. Noah is an interesting case too, because we know there was a flood. It wouldn't have been over the whole world, but it would have been over the whole known world at the time. So yeah, I, I mean, that's a way that, that stories may seem far-fetched but it is interesting to see how they parallel in things that we actually know about history too so
um, yeah, I think it's, I think that's an invitation to us. Um, while we don't take everything in scripture literally, as in like, this is the, the exact thing that happened. We also don't want to necessarily say, well, because of that, anything that's inconceivable didn't happen. Um, I think that's another another thing to be careful of, too. Because uh, again, miracles do happen and we see them in our own lives in these unexplained places where God intervenes for us. So uh, there's, there's that too. All right. Well, and with that, uh, great questions. And with that, we'll end our time for this week. So thanks everyone.